welcome back to my channel. It is Sunday, it is meal prep day. I am excited to get all of my WW foods prepped for the week. As you can see, I have no makeup as Sunday goes. I usually do not even get ready. I spend the whole day at home meal prepping, getting ready for the week, cleaning, laundry, you know, the typical household things. But we are going to meal prep four separate things today. I'm really giving you some goodies today. We're gonna do a breakfast, a lunch, part of my snack, and a dessert. So if you wanna see what I'm prepping to stay on track on WW this week, please stay tuned. For part of my breakfast this week, I'm going to make a breakfast sandwich. I'm super excited to make these. You can freeze these too, not a problem at all, but I'm going to make enough for the entire week, so I'm going to go ahead and make five. So here is what is gonna be in my breakfast sandwiches. So I have one of these sandwich slims. These are two smart points from Kroger. Of course, you can use any sandwich slim that you want or an English muffin, two slices of bread. Just make sure that you count your points accordingly. And then I'm going to use one slice of this Jarlsberg light reduced fat cheese. This cheese is a full size slice for one smart point. I am going to do two eggs and into my eggs, I'm going to add some of these Jimmy Dean fully cooked turkey sausage crumbles. You can have a quarter of a cup of these for only one smart point. And then I'm going to cook the eggs with the sausage in my handy dandy little egg pan, which makes the perfect shape to go on a breakfast sandwich. So let's make these breakfast sandwiches. So the first thing we need to do here is get our eggs cooking. So I usually get myself all set up. So I have my eggs. Then over here I have a paper plate that once I cook the eggs, I'll put them on the plate to divide them out for the sandwiches and allow them to cool. And then I have my turkey sausage crumples, my spray, my seasonings for my eggs. And then I'm going to do the one quarter cup, which is measured out here of the turkey sausage crumbles. And over here I have my little egg pan ready to go. So I'm gonna get my um, stove turned on here. And I like to cook my eggs at a fairly low temperature. And then we are going to spray our pan with some nonstick cooking spray. Let that warm up a little bit. And we are then going to cook our egg patties for our sandwiches. So I went ahead and cracked my two eggs into my pan and broke the yolk because I don't want it running out the side of my breakfast sandwich. And to my two eggs, I'm going to add a little bit of onion salt. As you know, it's my favorite thing to use on my eggs. And then I'm gonna add just a little bit of ground pepper to my eggs as well. And then the last thing I'm going to do is add in my quarter cup of my Jimmy Dean sausage crumbles. And then I'm just going to let these cook. I'll flip and they'll be a perfectly round shape to go onto my sandwich. Now that our eggs are all done and cooked into our patty, we're gonna assemble our breakfast sandwiches. So we're gonna need one of our sandwich slims. So we'll just open that up. To that, we are going to add one of our egg sausage patties. And I would recommend that you do let this cool before adding it to your sandwich because we're also going to add our slice of cheese and we don't want it to all melt and get icky together. So there is our breakfast sandwich. And then typically all I do is I take a sheet of saran wrap here and I'm just going to wrap it up and it is ready to go for the week. No need to use a meal prep container. Now, if you are going to freeze these, I would recommend that you wrap them in foil to freeze, but I'm gonna get the rest of my sandwiches put together and I'll show you my finished breakfasts for the week. With my breakfast sandwich, I'm going to have some blueberries. So I'm going to bake these up into little snack size bags. And then I'm going to show you what my completed breakfast looks like. So here is my completed breakfast for the week. I'm really excited about this breakfast. So over here, I have a small bag of blueberries. So that will be the first fruit that I eat will be with breakfast. And then I have my breakfast sandwiches. Look at these, how thick and yummy these look with the egg, sausage, and cheese. And this breakfast sandwich is only four smart points. Blueberries are zero. And then I'm going to have a light and fit Greek yogurt for two. So my entire breakfast prep here is only six smart points. This is a lot of food, should keep you nice and full, very well balanced with protein and carbs and fruit and dairy. Everything's all included in one delicious breakfast. 
Let's get started on this week's lunch. I am really excited to have this for lunch. I'm going to get this started first thing in the morning. It's about 7 a.m. on Sunday. I wanna make sure that this has the opportunity to cook all day. So I am going to make a slow cooker chili that I'm going to divide up for part of my lunches for the week. So you can see here that I have my slow cooker. I always put a liner in it. Trust me, you guys, cleanup is a million times easier when you have a crock pot liner. And here is what is in the chili. So we have one pound of lean ground turkey. I'm using 93.7 because I do not have any 99% on hand. This chili would be zero points if you chose to use the 99% lean. But I'm going to go ahead and use this. I don't want this to count as one of my zero point proteins. So I'm going to count the points for the turkey, which as you'll see is very minimal. We have one can of crushed tomatoes, a can of beans. The recipe calls for kidney beans. I prefer to use the mixed chili beans, the kidney and pinto. We have quite a few spices. We have chili powder, cumin, salt, and pepper. We are going to need tomato paste, a red pepper, a green pepper, a onion, some minced garlic, and then a small can of green diced chilies. So let's get our veggies chopped up, our turkey cooking, and we'll get everything into our crock pot. So the first thing I'm going to do is get my vegetables chopped up. I need to fully chop up a red and a green pepper and an onion. Put these in a bowl here, set these aside until the turkey is cooked, and then we'll get everything into our crock pot. So the next thing that we need to do is get our turkey browning. So I have my one pound of 93.7 turkey and we're going to get that browning when it starts to brown. That is when we are going to add in our veggies here and we're going to cook those down till they have softened a little bit before they actually go into our slow cooker. Our turkey is starting to cook through so I'm going to go ahead and add in all of my cut up peppers and onions and I'm just going to stir this in. I'm going to let these cook down until they're al dente and then they will go. We are going to start putting our ingredients for our chili into the crock pot here. So first things first, I am going to start with my can of chili beans and everything's just gonna go in here and once that meat mixture is cooked down and the veggies are softened, then that will go into our slow cooker as well. But we can kind of start getting the rest of our ingredients ready to go. And then I have my can of 28 ounces of crushed tomatoes. Now, as you know, I love Hunt's. I think that it's honestly the best flavor of um, any type of diced or crushed tomatoes. And then I've got my can of mild green chilies. I've got a good chunk of minced garlic here. And that is just this Trader Joe's minced garlic. I love it. And then we are going to add in our tomato paste. And again, this one is from Trader Joe's as well. I really, really like this tomato paste. It has excellent flavor. And with it being in the tube, it lasts forever versus going bad like the can does. I'm also going to add in some Trader Joe's salt. And I'm going to add in some pepper as well. And then we need to add our chili spices. So we have chili powder. And that's what's going to give it some heat. And I don't mind a little bit of heat, but I do want my husband to have this as well for leftovers. So I'm not going to go totally crazy on the chili powder. And then the last ingredient for spices is cumin. And then I will grab the meat mixture and we'll get this all mixed together. I've stirred up the items that we added and I decided... I'm going to go ahead and add a can of corn. There isn't that much beans in here. I wish that I would have even bought a second can of beans. So 
recommendation is to add two cans of beans, but I'm gonna go ahead and throw in a can of corn um, just for some extra chunkiness to my chili and a little bit of extra flavor. And the last thing into our chili is our meat and vegetable mixture. And then we're gonna get this stirred up and combined and get this cooking. And there's our chili, it looks so good. I'm really glad that I did decide to go ahead and add that can of corn. So I'm going to put my chili on low and I'm gonna let it cook most of the day. And then I'll probably bump it up to high um, towards the end of the day. So the recipe says to go ahead and cook your chili on high for four to five hours, but most of us work more than four to five hours. So I'm going to cook this like I would if I was at work today. So that is going to be on low. So I'll check back in with you um, at the end of the day before we prep this up in containers to take for lunches. Along with chili for lunch, I'm going to make vanilla cornbread muffins. I've made these before, they are so good, but I am going to change up the recipe just a little bit. But here is what is in our vanilla cornbread muffins. So you are going to need some self-rising flour, some sweetener alternative of your choice. I'm gonna go ahead and use this stevia in the raw. Unsweetened almond milk. I'm gonna use the vanilla, it's what I have on hand, and. You know, when in Rome, vanilla cornbread muffins. And you are going to need yellow cornmeal, light butter, a box of jello sugar free vanilla pudding. I am going to add a can of cream style sweet corn that is not in the recipe, and then some vanilla extract. So here is everything that's in our muffins. So let's get started. So, to start on our vanilla cornbread muffins, we are going to combine all of our dry ingredients. So, here I have one cup of the self rising flour. And in this, I have two thirds cup of the yellow cornmeal. And then we are going to add three tablespoons of our sweetener. So, this is that stevia in the raw. And then we are going to add our package of sugar free vanilla pudding. And we're gonna give this a quick stir. We just wanna get all of our dry ingredients nice and combined before we add in our wet ingredients to actually make our muffins. So these, you guys, are so good. They're so good paired with chili. They're, by, they're great by themselves. You could even have these as part of your breakfast. If you put some eggs or another zero point uh, protein with them, it would be a very low point breakfast. So once we get our dry ingredients combined, then we are going to add in our butter. So we have our, I can't believe it's not butter, light. And we are going to put in about two tablespoons of that butter. And then we are going to kind of mix this together until um, it gets a little bit chopped up. You wanna make sure your butter is softened. And then to this, we are also going to add in our vanilla extract and it calls for one teaspoon of vanilla extract. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that in, and we're gonna give this a stir until our mixture is a little bit more on the crumbly side. So you are going to have to kind of chop up that butter as you're stirring to get it a little bit more on the crumbly side before we add in the rest of our ingredients, but looking good. Once you get your mixture into a crumbly state, we're gonna add in our unsweetened almond milk. I did go ahead and only use a half of a cup. The recipe calls for a full cup, and the reason I did that is because I'm going to add in my creamed corn, and I'm gonna use the whole can, and that's going to be the rest of the liquid. If I would have added all of the creamed corn and all of the almond milk, it, the batter itself would have been too runny. So I added in my can of creamed corn and I added in my half of a cup of almond milk. The trick is not to over mix it. You basically just wanna make sure that you get all of your ingredients combined and then this is going to go into our muffin tin and I'm going to use a special muffin tin for my cornbreads and I'll show you what that looks like. But look at how good this looks. So. Just make sure all of your ingredients get nice and combined and we'll be ready to add this into our muffin tin. So I'm going to use this, I just got this. This is a Wilton brownie pan. These are so great to make miniature loaves of bread, miniature muffins, miniature brownies. Great, great portion control. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this for my corn muffins. 
I'm going to spray it with some nonstick cooking spray. Um, the recipe does tell you to add liners if you are going to use a muffin tin. So I'm going to just liberally spray these because I want to make sure that I get all the sides. I don't want my cornbreads to stick to it. So I'm going to make sure that I'm spraying all of the sides of my muffin tin. And our, our completed little muffin loaves. This will go into the oven at 375 for 14 to 16 minutes or until our toothpick comes out clean. The vanilla cornbread muffins are out of the oven. Look at how good these look. I'm gonna show you up close the size. So this is the size of one of the muffins. They're cute, they're in a little cute square shape. But this is only two smart points per muffin. They're very, very good. They kind of have that sweet extra corn flavor with that cream corn. So this is going to be a portion of my lunch and we'll put it all together once the chili is finished cooking in the crock pot. My chili is done in the crock pot. Look at how delicious this looks. Super excited to have this for lunches this week. This is a lot of chili. And if I can get seven servings, whoo, steam it. If I can get seven servings out of this crock pot of chili, each serving will be two smart points. So let's put together some meal prep containers and see what we come up with. All right, I was able to get seven servings out of my chili. So I have my five meal prep containers here. And then I have a little over two servings in my bowl here. I actually could have probably got eight, but I decided to go with seven. So each serving of the chili is two smart points. Look how delicious that looks. And then my little cornbread muffin here is also two smart points. So my lunches are a total of four smart points. Not bad for chili and a corn muffin. I was told in my grocery haul video that WW does count cream corn as points. I have less than a cup in all of my muffins, which would be six points, which would essentially add half of a point per muffin. So I am not going to count any additional points for my cornbread muffins. They will remain two smart points. So let me get this all put away. I'll add the rest of my lunch to it, and I'll show you what my completed lunches for the week will be. So here is a completed lunch for the week. You can see here that I have my chili and cornbread for a total of four smart points. I have my organic unsweetened applesauce for zero. I have my two packs of Smart Sweets, which is my treat after lunch. Two packs is one Smart Point. A lot of you have been asking me about these little packs of Smart Sweets. They no longer have these. These were something that they had around Halloween, but you can still order the full bags, which are only three Smart Points and are so good. I do have a discount code for free shipping on the Smart Suite, so it's a really good deal to get the free shipping. So I'll include that as well in the description box below. And then I'm going to have a string cheese. This is the Trader Joe's light string cheese for one Smart Point. So my entire lunch is a total of six Smart Points. And boy, does it look delicious. For part of my snacks for the week and my goal to eat more veggies throughout the day, I am going to make a dip out of the Fa A Total 0% non-fat Greek yogurt and some ranch powder. This dip will be zero smart points per serving. So let me show you how I make my dip and we'll package it up to take with us throughout the week. To make this dip is very easy. We're gonna use some of the Fa A Greek yogurt. This one is almost gone and I'll dig into the other one. But you're just gonna put in as much yogurt as you want. Now I need dip for five days and then I think I'm gonna make a little bit extra um, to go with any extra vegetables I have as well as for my husband. He was asking if he could have carrots and cucumbers as well in his lunches. And he works today, but he has three more days this week. So I want to make sure that I'm making enough dip that I can even give him a little bit. So I think that that will probably do it for the amount of Greek yogurt. And then I have just some ranch seasoning here. Basically, you're just going to add it to taste. Now, I know a lot of people count seasoning and a lot of people don't. I am one of the people that does not count the seasoning. Um, on anything that I make because I don't think that there's enough seasoning in anything to constitute points. But if you want to count your seasoning, you do you and you count your seasoning. Um, I would say that it's however you want to work the plan. And then as I kind of mix in my seasoning, 
I will kind of taste my dip and make sure that it is the taste and as flavorful with the ranch as I'd like. The ranch does kind of also help counteract the Greek yogurt taste. So there you have it. Easy peasy. I'm going to put this into little containers and we will chop up some veggies. After tasting my dip, I did decide that I am going to add some minced onion and I may also add just a little bit of sweetener like maybe some stevia or splenda to cut the tartness of the yogurt. That's kind of a trick to cut acidity or tartness is to add a little bit of sweetener. You'll see that I often do that when I'm making spaghetti sauce because it tarts, it stops the acidity of the tomato. So I'm gonna add a little bit of onion. I think that'll help with the sweetness. And then I'm going to add a little bit of sweetener. So I'm just gonna add one of these little packets. This is the Zero Calorie Stevia, the Simple Truth brand. It's not gonna make your dip sweet um, as long as you don't overdo the sweetener, but it will just kind of take that yogurt tanginess out of your dip. And by adding the onion, I did taste that that really helped as well. So there is the completed dip. So here are my veggies for the week that I'm gonna have to dip into my yogurt dip. So I just cut up and washed some stalks of celery. I washed two cucumbers, and then I'm going to have some cut and peeled baby carrots. So let me get my celery and my cucumbers chopped up, and then um, we'll bag all the veggies up along with our ranch dip. cut up and ready to go my dip is ready to go I am going to take one of these Kroger to go cups you can also buy these on Amazon I've seen these at the Dollar Tree Walmart these are a must-have if you work and you need to pack food on the go and then I'm also just going to take some Ziploc sandwich bags and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bag up my vegetables so I want just a variety of the different vegetables uh, for each day. So some celery and then we'll add a little bit of carrots. So I have kind of a variety here of vegetables. And then I'm going to take one of my little to-go cups here. So one little cup and they also come with lids which is amazing. And I'm going to just put in a little bit of my veggie dip. Um, just enough to dip my vegetables in um, that I have packed here in my little baggie. So there's that. And then I'm going to pop a lid on there. Now, I don't know that I'll eat all of this dip um, or not, but I always will just pop it into the same bag as my vegetables. Seal that up. Try to get all the air out to keep the vegetables fresh. Seal that up. And there you go. You have a bag of vegetables ready to go for the week. I'm going to finish out the rest of the week and I'll show you what snacks I'm bringing. So these are going to bring the snacks that I'm going to bring with me to work. Again, I don't always eat these, all of these items every day, but I do like to have a good variety of snacks available. So my plan is to, of course, eat my vegetables every day. So I have some cut up cucumbers, celery, carrots, and then that ranch dip that you saw me make. And then I'm going to bring a bag of these Ritz Crisp and Thins. These are only three smart points per bag, and this would be nice to have just on hand if I want a crunchy snack. And then my new favorite thing I found are the Smash Mellows. This is the Cinnamon Churro. I'll show you again the size of these. They're only one smart point a piece. So I'm going to just bring this whole bag and throw it in my desk drawer. And then, of course, the standard Built Bar. This is my AM snack every single day. There isn't a day that goes by that I don't have a Built Bar as an AM snack. And these are only three smart points. So I do have discount code for the Built Bars. I have two separate codes, one for a sample pack and one for a full size box. I am going to link those down in the description box below. So if you have not tried these, please, I urge you with all of my heart and soul to order yourself a sample box. Save the full box code because you're going to want a full box. So these are my snacks for this week. For some desserts this week, I'm going to go ahead and make some WW Friendly Ice Cream Sandwiches. If you haven't seen these before, they're super good. You can use either chocolate grams like I have here. These will be for me. Or you can use regular graham crackers like the honey or the cinnamon. These are going to be for my husband. He does not like chocolate. 
and you can have one sheet or two of the little squares of the crackers for two smart points and then you pair that with some light whip topping in the middle and you can have two tablespoons or nine grams for only one smart point that would make this a three smart point dessert so let's put together some ice cream sandwiches so to make our ice cream sandwiches, you're gonna start with an entire sheet of your graham cracker, and you're going to go ahead and put those face down woo, on your scale. Go ahead and zero that out, and then we are going to add nine grams of whipped topping, so that way we have exactly one smart point worth, seven. And you can go ahead and add it to both sides, it doesn't really matter. Um, because you're going to smoosh these together anyways. So there we go. Nine grams of whipped topping. You're going to fold that together. You want to kind of spread out your whipped topping if you can. Look at that. Yum. And then you're going to pop these in the freezer. So what I normally do is put them on a plate. I pop them in the freezer. I let the whipped topping start to harden before I actually wrap them in foil for storage. So I'm going to make a whole bunch of these and we will throw these into the freezer. I just pulled the graham cracker sandwiches, ice cream sandwiches out of the freezer. I'm just going to wrap these in some foil and then we'll put these right back into the freezer. So that way they are safely stored uh, for a dessert. And there you have it. There are our pre-portioned ice cream sandwiches. I'm gonna throw them back into the freezer. What a great treat for only three smart points. Thank you for coming with me on this week's WW Meal Prep. I hope I gave you some great ideas for some things that you can make to stay on track on WW. If you haven't already, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give my video a thumbs up, comment below, let me know what's on your meal plan for the week, what you're gonna do to stay on track, and of course, I'll see all of you in my next video. Bye!